Hello everyone, welcome to the series of Art and Culture. In this video, we are going to discuss about two chapter that is calendars in India and awards and honor. So without delaying, let's get started. So first of all, let's have a, a definition or let's know what is calendar. See calendar, it is a system of organizing days for social, religious, commercial or administrative purpose. So, um, this organizing day, it is done by giving uh, names to the periods of time, uh, especially to the uh, uh, days, weeks, month and year. So, a date, it is the designation of a single specific day within um, such a system. So, a calendar, it is a physical record which is often a paper. So, in India, we have various system of um, that has come into work at different times uh, to mark the commencement of new year. So, um, the calendars across various regions of India are uh, as follows like uh, solar system, uh, lunar system and lunisolar system. Now, let's have a brief discussion regarding this uh, so, uh, three systems that is solar, lunar and lunisolar. First of all, let's see about the solar year. See, the solar year, it represents the time taken by the earth revolving in its orbit around the uh, sun. Uh, that is uh, nothing but the solid ties or the uh, equinox to which it returns after completing its journey. So, the solar year, it consists of totally 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes and 46 seconds. So... The solar year, it has totally 12 months. And coming to the point of lunar year, uh, see this lunar year is same as that of uh, solar year that consists of 12 months or lunations. And this each lunation is the syndic month that is measured by the period falling between the two successive full moons and the new moons. So, this uh, lunar year, it consists of 354 days, uh, which is 11 days short to, uh, to that of the solar um, year. So, the, uh, this difference is accounted by an intercalation or suppression to make a lunar year conform to the solar uh, year. See, to adjust uh, the lunar year with that of uh, solar year, an intercalary month is introduced. Every 2.5 years in this uh, lunar year to adjust the solar year. So, this extra month or the intercalary month, it is called as Adik Masha. Now, let's see about lunisolar year. So, in this lunisolar year in which the year is calculated by the solar cycle and the months uh, by the lunar division as in this of uh, Hindu calendar. So, the adjustment between two being brought uh, about by the intercalation and suppression of days and months. Now, let's see about the various um, months which exist within the uh, three calendars that is uh, solar system, lunar system and lunisolar system. So, the first let's see about the solar month. See, in the solar month, we have totally 12 months and uh, bear the names of the 12 zodiac signs which are called as uh, Rasis or Mansions. So, uh, these are the following 12 uh, Rasis. You can have a look on that. So, these are the pic uh, pictures which indicates uh, the uh, 12 zodiac signs. Now, let's see about the lunar month. See, this lunar month, it is um, it ends either with the new moon or the full moon. So, See, out of these two types of months uh, described, the lunar month, uh, it is followed in greater part of the uh, India. So, the month in various calendars forms are divided into pakshas or four nights, uh, weeks and days. So, two pakshas or four nights under lunar calendar, they are uh, Shukla Paksha and Krishna Paksha. So, Shukla Paksha, it is the bright half which starts with the day following the new moon. And this Krishna Paksha, it is the dark half which starts uh, with the day following the uh, full moon. So, the lunar day is called Tidhi or Vasara, whereas the solar day, it is called Divasa. So, uh, the duration of Tidhi or the lunar day, it is shorter than that of the Divasa or the solar day, covering day and night from one sunrise to another. 
so the average duration of tidhi is 23 hours and 37 minutes which is uh, 23 minutes less than the divasa or the solar day so the tidhi is further divided into gatika pala and vipala and is uh, related to the gregorian calendar so one day and night is equal to one divasa which is 24 hours that is 60 gatikas so one gatika is 60 palas that is 24 minute and one pala equal to uh, 60 vipalas equal to 24 seconds so two gatikas that is one muhurta which is equal to 48 minute uh, and 2.5 uh, muhurta are equal to two and hours now let's see about uh, hindu calendar so panjanga or the hindu calendar takes in uh, account of panch that is five ankas or limbs so that is through uh, year month paksha tidhi gatika and or uh, tidhi vara nakshatra yoga and karana so the 12 places or uh, rasis through which the sun passes during the year is named after a group of star called the nakshatras so there are totally 28 nakshatras or consultations and nakshatras are unequal in size and they do not have the same number of stars and some will have uh, one or uh, two as well so each rasi consists of two to three nakshatras see uh, this solar year it is divided into two halves under the calendar uh, hindu calendar one is uttrayana and other one is dakshinayana see in this uttrayana first six months from Mah- uh, mahara sangranti to karka sangranti that is uh, from paush uh, from january to uh, june it is the uh, god's day in uh, dakshayana the last six month that is from july to december it is god's night so uh, that is uh, from june uh, sorry it is from january to june it is god's day and from july to december it is uh, god's night which is uh, called dakshinayana so one solar year is equal to one day and one night of the god so uh, now let's see the four eras or yugas see according to the hindu beliefs you have refers to the epoch or era with four age cycle so, see uh, the four age cycles or yugas are uh, satya yuga or krutta yuga which is equal to uh, 17 lakhs uh, years and trutta yuga which is equal to 12 lakh years and dwapara yuga which is equal to 8 lakh uh, years and kali yuga which is equal to 4 lakh uh, years so presently uh, we are uh, running in kali yuga which started at uh, 3102 uh, bc and these four yuga constitute one maha yuga which is uh, equals 4.32 million human years so there are 1000 uh, maha yugas in one day of brahma or 4.32 million human years and uh, maha maha kalpa consists of 100 years of brahma so let's see about the krutta yuga or satya yuga see this uh, yuga it is the first one and the uh, golden yuga and it was the age of truth and perfection and uh, there existed one religion and all men swear saintly and there is no requirement of performing religious ceremony during the satya yuga see all mankind could attain supreme uh, blessedness and there was no agriculture or mi- mining as the earth uh, yielded those riches uh, on its own and weather was pleasant and everyone was happy during the satya yuga so uh, there are no religious sects and there is no disease or fear uh, during the satya yuga and during the trutta yuga virtue are uh, diminished uh, slightly in the second uh, that is during this uh, yuga and um, many emperors uh, they dominated and conquered this world and war began and weather was extremist 
and oceans and deserts were for, uh, formed during this Tritta Yuga and agriculture labors, mining uh, became uh, started during this Yuga. An average lifespan of human being uh, reduced to 1000 to 10,000 years during this Yuga. Now the Dwapara Yuga, in this uh, people became uh, tainted with the Tamasic uh, qualities and they were uh, not as strong as their ancestors. So disease uh, came into rampant and uh, humans uh, were discontent and fought uh, each other. And the average lifespan of um, the human being started reducing. See the next is uh, Kali Yuga. See this Kali Yuga it is the final age and this is the age of darkness and ignorance. See people became uh, sinners and lack virtue during this Kali Yuga and they became slaves to their passions. And uh, average li lifespan of people were barely 100 years and by the end of the yuga it will be uh, as low of 20 years. Now let's see about the classification of Indian calendar forms. So in India various forms of calendars came into picture uh, based on the various eras uh, to which it relates. So uh, let's see their classification. So the first one is Vikram Sambat which is a lunisolar system so this vikram era it started 56 years before the christian era that is around 56 bc and it is in force in almost all of india except the region of bengal so this era is uh, historians believe it is said to be have been established by the king vikramaditya of ujjain to commemorate his victory over the sakka rulers so many historians uh, they believe that Vikram Sambat was uh, originally instituted by Malava Ganarajya and hence it is known as Malava uh, Gana era and it is named after Chandragupta Vikramaditya when he conquered the Malva uh, around 400 AD. So this Vikram uh, Sambat it is a lunar calendar based on ancient Hindu uh, calendar. And this calendar is 56.7 years ahead of a solar Gregorian calendar. So this new year begins within the first day after the new moon and in the month of Chaitra which usually falls on the month of March, April in the uh, Gregorian calendar. See in Nepal uh, it begins in the mid-April and marks the starts of solar new year. So it, uh, this uh, calendar it totally has 354 days um, and it is divided into 12 months uh, which are uh, Chaitra, uh, Vaishaka, Jesta and as follows. So for the most uh, part of Indian territory the Vikram era starts with the Kartika as its first year. So each month it is divided into two halves in this Vikram Sambar that is four night uh, the bright half and to adjust with the um, uh, solar year that is uh, 11 days with the solar years. This Vikram Samvat it has um, after a cycle of every 3 years and every 5 years 13 months an extra month added it uh, which is known as Adik Masha. So 0 year under Vikram Samvat is 56 BC. Now let's see about Shaka uh, Samvat which is also a lunisolar system. So this calendar, it was initiated by King uh, Shalivahan in 58 uh, AD, sorry, 78 AD, and it is also known as Shaka era. Uh, and as it is to uh, the uh, tribe that Shalivahan belonged to. So historians uh, do not have confusion with, uh, of whether the uh, Shalivahan was Shaka himself or conquered Shakas and the Shaka calendar is both solar and uh, lunar with lunar months and solar years and uh, also has the same number of months as that of Vikram era. So the months uh, commence in different periods. See the Shaka calendar has a fixed number of day in each month and the names of month in both the calendars are the same. So Shaka calendar starts with Shaitriya followed by Vaishaka and all and the number of days in Shaka year is uh, 365 days. Now let's see about Hijri uh, calendar which is a uh, lunar system. So in the calendar uh, it, uh, it is the Arabic origin and it is termed as Amulf, Amulfil 
and it is changed to hijri or hijra after the death of prophet muhammad to commemorate his uh, his hijrat from uh, mecca to madina so which took place uh, in the 52nd year of his life in 620 uh, 622 ad so this year uh, became, became the zero year after the hijri era and a year under this calendar is the lunar and it is divided into 12 months and have 354 days in a year so this uh, the day commences with the sunset of this calendar and this calendar was adopted in india during the reign of muslim rulers so the 12 months are as follows so you can have a look on that so in this ninth month that is ramadan which excess uh, excuse heat when people keeps fast for the purification of the soul so shawal it is a month to go out of hunting and dul al qada it is a month to get the camels ready for travel and dul al hija it is the last month which is dedicated to the pilgrimage so out of this 12 months four months are considered as sacred and that is one first month seventh month 11th month and 12th month so the month is completely lunar and it occur in such a sequence that there is no relation uh, what over uh, either to the cycle of season or the solar year so the difference between the solar year and the lunar, uh, lunar year it is not adjusted in the hijri calendar whereas in the above calendars we have seen that it is adjusted that is those 11 days were adjusted with the in calendar uh, or um, the extra month so it falls short of one uh, year every 33 years compared to that of gregorian calendar which is based on the solar year now let's see about the gregorian calendar see this gregorian calendar it is mainly based on the birthday of uh, the um, founder of christianity that is jesus christ so it is a solar year which is commencing from the first day of january and consist of 36 uh, sorry 365 days 5 hours 46 48 minutes and 46 seconds so extra hours could not be included to this uh, gregorian calendar for the year and the device of intercalation was adopted and the system of adding one day every four year to the month of february came into uh, vogue and uh, the year under this calendar is known as civil year now let's see the national calendar of india so the shaka calendar used the official uh, civil calendar uh, in india and it is used through the notification in the official gazette by the government of india and uh, in news broadcast by all india radio calendars and communication documents issued under the control of government of india so the shaka calendar it was one of the hindu uh, calendar which was originally named as shaka sambat and it is used for the calculation of days of religious significance in the hindu religions so the shaka calendar it was adopted uh, as the national calendar in the year 1957 by the calendar reform committee which was set up by the uh, government of india so the committee made effort to co inside the astronomical data and harmonize the use of this uh, calendar after recit, uh, rectification of some local errors so it came into use from march uh, 22 1957 according to the gregorian calendar which was actually chaitra 1 uh, 1879 that is according to the um gregorian calendar it came into uh, being in march 22 1957 uh, but according um, actually according to the shaka calendar it was at the month of chaitra 1 1879 so it was adopted by the uh, adopted as a national calendar of india in order to synchronize the use of 30 different kinds of calendars used in india at the time now let's see a new chapter that is awards and honors see uh, recently we have uh, saw on that in upsc prelims paper we had a question on awards so we have to uh, concentrate more on this awards and honors so now let's have an introduction on this uh, chapter see awards and honors they are given for both um, as an individual or at a group level Uh, which is uh, like a token of appreciation or recognition for the extraordinary work so government of india it gives several honors every year to those who achieved outstanding merit in their field so now let's see some of the awards given by government of india 
द फर्स्ट वन इज भारत रत्न विच इज़ द हाइएस्ट सिविलियन अवार्ड ऑफ इंडिया सी द टाइटल भारत रत्न विच लिटरली मीन्स ज्वेल्व ऑफ इंडिया एंड इट इज़ द हाइएस्ट सिविलियन अवार्ड विच वॉज बेस्ट ऑन बाई द रिपब्लिक ऑफ इंडिया सी दिस भारत रत्न इट इज़ अवार्ड टू द एक्सेप्शनल इंडिविजुअल्स हु हैज़ परफॉर्म्ड इन द हाइएस्ट ऑर्डर सो इट वॉज गिवन इन नाइनटीन सेवन फिफ्टी फोर एंड दिस अवार्ड इट वॉज ओरिजिनली गिवन टू आर्टिस्ट हु हैड आउटस्टैंडिंग अचीवमेंट्स इन आर्ट साइंस लिटरेचर एंड पब्लिक सर्विस but in 2011 uh, this uh, criteria was expanded to include any field of human endeavor so those who excel in any field uh, they were uh, recognized or appreciated with this bharat ratna so this is uh, the bharat ratna award uh, which is uh, look like so the prime minister of india makes the recommendation uh, to the president of india who chooses not more than 3 people in a particular year for the award so in an year only 3 people can be uh, chosen for this bharat ratna award and no money was given for the award is those who uh, are chosen and are given a people leaf shaped medal and a certificate so according to indian order of precedence those who are given bharat ratna are ranked 7th so the award cannot be used as a prefix or suffix to the recipient's name in terms of article 18 clause 1 of the constitution so according to article 18 clause 1 no one can use this uh, award that is they can't use the name of the award in uh, behind or uh, that is prefix or suffix to their uh, name so you can have a look on some of the awardees and their um, on which field they excel and which year they got those awards so have a look on those awards now let's see about the padma awards see this padma awards they were introduced in 1954 and uh, are being given to the deserving individuals for their exceptional service in their chosen fields like uh, sports art social work civil service literature education public affairs science and technology trade and uh, industries etc so the name of the awardees will be uh, announced every year on republic day so this padma award it was um, given in every year except three times that is during 1977 1918 and between 1993 to 1997 See there is a uh, several uh, rules concerning to that of Padma awards that is uh, if someone is a recipient of a lesser degree of Padma award they can be awarded with a de- awarded a higher degree of award after the five or more years since uh, that last conferment and the second uh, rule is the award are rarely given uh, posthumously that is after death but exemptions can be made if uh, the case highly deserves and the third one is um, there ought to be an element of public service in the achievements of persons to be selected and it should not be merely on the basis of excellence in any field but it should be based on the excellence plus and the fourth one is government of uh, government servants including those working in psus uh except doctors and scientists are not eligible for these awards so according to government of india the award that is the padma award it is of three category that is padma vibhushan uh, for exceptional and distinguished service which is second degree honor and the padma bhushan which is third degree honor and padma shri which is the fourth degree honor now let's see about padma vibhushan See this Padma Vibhushan it is the highest civilian award which is given by the Republic of India and those privileged to get this award are given a citation certificate and a medal with a lotus flower in the middle um, and the word desh seva <coughs> on that medal and the next one is Padma Bhushan see this Padma Bhushan it is the third highest civilian award which is given by the government of india for those who contributed to india's reputation in global scenario so the president of india confers the award in elaborate ceremony held at the rashtrapati bhavan in march or april 
and the next one is padma shri award it is the highest uh, fourth highest civilian award um, in the republic of india and it is given by government of india for the contribution to various subjects like art literature sports politics industry medicine social services etc so the awardee is not given cash but a certificate and a medal is given uh, a medal with three leafed flower on one side and the uh, padma and the shri is written in the uh, devanagiri script now let's see the national film awards so there are um, most prominent awards given to those who created the cinematic excellence so the these award or annual awards they have started from 1954 onwards and it was in the year 1973 the director of uh, film fest directorate of film festival was made responsible for organizing these awards so government appoints a national selection panel which decides the winner for this national film award so the president of india presents the uh, presents this award and the films that win are sort cast to the public so you can have uh, awardees of this national award see this national award it also include various prestigious dada shaghi palke lifetime achievement award which is presented to those who spend their entire career to contribute to the indian cinema now let's see about sahitya academy award see this is an honor which is given to the those who achieve brilliance in literature so this award it was started in 1954 and it was given by sahitya academy that is the national academy for letters of our country see um, the sahitya academy award it was given annually to those who achieved in uh, literary merit and it was cre- it created a new trend by publishing their works prose or poetries in uh, 24 major uh, languages that are uh, recognized by this academy so beside the 22 languages which are enumerated in our constitution the sahitya academy it recognized english and rajasthani as the language and uh, in which the programs can be implemented and hence can be considered for the award so the award comprises of cash prize of 1 lakh rupee and a plaque which says sahitya in the devanagiri script now let's see the other literary honors the first one is sahitya academy fellowship see uh, this academy also offers a prestigious fellowship called the sahitya academy fellowship so this is the honest, uh, highest honor conferred by the academy where they select the fellow and honorary fellow who are chosen only because of their uh, outstanding contribution to the literary art so becoming a fellow of sahitya academy it is the highest honor that even receiving the um, sahitya academy award. so this award which is equal to that of the sahitya academy award the next one is basha samman uh, so this basha samman these are awards which are given by the sahitya academy for the literary works so every year the academy chooses writers who have made significant contribution to the indian languages other than the 24 language which are covered in the sahitya academy award so the contribution uh, to classical and medieval literature um, is also included and this uh, basha um, samman comprises a plaque and a cash prize of 1 lakh rupees see the next award is the translation award see uh, these are given um, uh, by the sahitya academy to those who attempt to translate the major work from the other language to the 24 languages which are mentioned by the sahitya academy so special importance is given to those who attempt to uh, the translation of ancient and medieval literatures and the prize consists of cash prize of rupees 50000 and a play and the next one is gnanpeeth award see it is also known as the gnanpeeth award or the seat of knowledge and it, it is given for the outstanding literary achievement and it is instituted in 1961 by the uh, uh, baritya gnanpeeth a trust run by the jain family famous for founding the newspaper the times of india see um, this award is given to those indian citizens who compose uh, literature in one of the 22 language which are listed in the pa- uh, schedule 8 of the indian constitution 
and um, english so the awardees are awarded with plague and a crash prize of 11 lakh rupees and the winner is also given a bronze statue of goddess saraswati so this award is not given uh, posthumously that is after death this award cannot be uh, given and there are 23 languages which the gyanpeeth award is given the next one is saraswati samman see the saraswati samman it is an annual award for the outstanding prose or poetry uh, literary work in the 22 languages which are listed in the schedule 8 of the indian constitution so it is named after the indian goddess of learn, uh, learning saraswati who is saraswati and it is considered to be the uh, highest literary award in india see the saraswati samman it is instituted in 1991 by kk brilla foundation and uh, it consists of 15 lakh uh, rupees a citation and a plague uh, to the awardee and the candidates are selected from literary work published in the past 10 years see the next one is uh, vyas samman this vyas samman it is a literary award in india it was first awarded in 1991 and it is awarded annually by kk brilla foundation and it includes cash payout of 250000 so to a person to get eligible to this uh, vyas samman um the literary work must be in hindi language and uh, it has been published within uh, the past 10 years the next one is dada shahi palke award see it is introduced in uh, 1969 dada shahi palke award it is india's highest award in cinema to commemorate dada shahi palke the legendary film maker who made the first uh, india's first full length feature film raja hari chandra in 1913 so it is awarded by the directorate of film festival and organization set up by the ministry of information and broadcasting so this award is given for the outstanding contribution to the growth and development of indian cinema and it is selected by a committee consisting of eminent personalities from the indian film industry so see uh, as of 2017 the award comprises uh, a swarna kamal that is golden lotus and a cash prize of rupees 10 lakh The next one is Fukuoka Prize. Uh, see, it is an award which is established by the city Fukuoka in J- Japan to honor the outstanding work of individual or organization in preserving or creating Asian culture. So there are three prizes category under this Fukuoka Prize. The first one is Grand Prize, then Academic Prize, and then Art and Culture Prize. So few prominent Indians who uh, won this prize are. Uh, uh ram R- romila thapar amjad ali khan and ramchandra guha and ar rahman t hn bai so these were the people who won this fukuoka uh, prize from india so with this we have come to the end of the chapter awards and